Hi, I'm Robin from Sasseru Consulting and uh, as part of Clinical Audit Awareness Week I just wanted to share another tip for you for facilitating clinical audit. So this is tip number two, here goes. Plan and schedule your re-audit and your audit feedback mechanisms while you're planning your first audit data collection cycle. Why do this? Is this best practice? Well, HQIP, who've recently released this very useful best practice in clinical audit document which is compendium, uh, it says this, the audit cycle is not complete until evidence has been obtained to demonstrate that implementation of the action plan has resulted in an improvement in the quality of services. It's obvious. Now we know this, but in practical terms that means once you've collected your data, the likelihood is, because this is true of most audits, the likelihood is that your audit is not going to show that you are exactly where you want to be in terms of performance. There's going to be a gap, which means you're going to need to do some actions to make improvements to the service and then a re-audit subsequently, a second cycle of data collection, in order to confirm that you've made an improvement. So you know that you're going to need to do that. The likelihood is you are. The likelihood is you're going to need to do some actions. You're definitely going to need to feed back the results of your first data collection cycle. So why not plan all that right at the beginning? And it might be as simple as putting a few extra dates in the diary to meet up with your audit lead so that you can do the re-audit. It might be more complicated. You might have had to pull in people and resource in order to get your data collection for your cycle one. So doing all that again for cycle two may be more than just a couple of dates in the diary but it's probably easier to plan those two cycles of data collection and get those resources and people in place the second time uh, when you're doing it uh, right at the beginning and of course you can extend that to planning how you're going to provide feedback to stakeholders the public in general from your first cycle of audit data collection. So what are the benefits of doing it this way? Well of course planning dates is always a little bit easier the further in uh, advance you are. So um, rather than planning um, your de second data collection cycle at that later stage, if you're doing it now it's probably easier to put those dates in. It also makes it a bit easier to use the the same method for the second data collection cycle as you are using for the first. If you're planning it out the first time, you can make sure you put all the same elements, steps, method in for the second data collection cycle. You want the same data collection method for the first and the second data collection cycle wherever possible because it increases the comparability of the results. It gives you a more accurate estimate of whether you've made an improvement. You're also building on the initial commitment of the frontline team to do the audit. It's much easier to perhaps sell that idea of doing the re-audit to see if you've made an improvement right at the beginning than trying to sell the idea of doing another data collection cycle at the point where you've got to the really hard stage of trying to make changes to the service. That's usually when many audits fall down. So do it at the beginning, capitalise on that initial commitment of the team. You also avoid losing momentum. If your team knows and you know they've planned and agreed that a re-audit is a few months down the road, then they know that they need to make some improvements to their service before that re-audit starts to kick in. So you've got a definite deadline there to try and get some momentum going for making changes. The other th good thing about this method is that you're not cluttering up your action plan with things that really should be part of the audit protocol. You see, feeding back the results to stakeholders, that's part of the audit protocol. Doing a re-audit is part of the audit protocol. It's not making an improvement to the service. Save your action plan for actual improvements to the service that you're trying to improve, rather than putting audit actions into the plan. Now, what if things don't go to plan? that can happen and you can always reschedule move dates forward or backward but if you've got that initial commitment it's probably easier to do that 
than it is to schedule dates again uh, from scratch. So I hope this helps. If you like, you know what to do. If you want to subscribe, that would be great as well. In the meantime, keep going, keep facilitating, and I'll see you again.